Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. We are continuing right along in our series loading Precision 6.5 Creedmoor using the Forster Coax, the RCS Charge Master Lite. We're using Starline Brass. I've changed back to brand new brass because in this case I'm going to be fire forming. And in this video, I'm going to specifically cover the 10 shot low development methodology. Now, to start off, there's a couple things. 10 shot low development is really focused on honing in on low SD numbers and low ES numbers. So standard deviation and extreme spread for the feet per second as measured with a chronograph. There's another methodology that is equally valuable called the optimal charge weight methodology where you shoot successive groups at a target. This accounts for things like barrel harmonics, barrel vibrations, the rifle dynamics. The 10 shot load development is really focused on pressure dynamics. When pressure is building over successive incremental increases in charge weight, you might expect a linear graph. Well, that's actually not the case. I'll show you a little example here. First time I ran 10 shot load development was with my friend Carl, 6.5 Creedmoor as well. This was for his Bergara. And what you see is areas in the graph where it plateaus or flattens out before it increases again with incremental increases in charge weight. Those are called speed nodes and they're areas of stability with the charge weight. So you can vary the charge weight slightly and you get almost no change in your speed. That's represented by the standard deviation and the extreme spread. So, what it allows you to do is very quickly hone in on these areas where the pressure is stable and where you're going to get very consistent feet per second numbers. And that's really important for long distance rifle shooting because the further you get out, the more that SD and the more that extreme spread matter really quite a bit. And so I already did a 10 shot load development with the Ruger Precision Rifle and with this setup, I'll show you the graph for that. And again, I found speed nodes. You're gonna to wanna to favor the upper speed node, which in this case was 40.5 grains of H4350. In talking with Hodgson's chief ballistician, if you're close to max charge weight, you're likely to get more consistent burn under more varied conditions. You can have the inclination of the rifle different, different temperatures. Overall, if you can get that case capacity near 100%, even very, very slightly compressed where that's approved in the, in the load data manual, that's gonna be a sweet spot. So what I did was I loaded 10 rounds. I've got my reference sheet right here. What you wanna do is start at max or whatever you're comfortable with. And of course, you're gonna be checking for pressure signs and whatnot on your way up. And then what I did is I backed up 0.2 grains for each of the successive 10 rounds that I loaded. And again, I saw the, the speed nodes on the graph, which are those plateau areas, like 40.5 is one. What I want to do in this video is use my new dueling banjos Charge Master Lite setup here with two units, just got the second one, and I'm going to load 50 rounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to test this theory. We're going to have the same charge weights, but I'm going to load five of each, and then we're going to shoot them in strings of five, and then on the graph, what I'm hoping we're gonna see is things tighten up around the speed nodes. So we'll see less vertical deviation around those speed nodes, and that will confirm the theory that those speed nodes provide stable pressure and very low SD numbers, low ES numbers. So we're kind of geeking out here. This is gonna be fun. Again, I've got the brand new Starline Brass. I'm, I'm using this as an opportunity to fire form because for 10 shot load development, really all you need to do is shoot over the chronograph. It doesn't need to be shot at a target. You're not measuring group sizes or anything like that. So we're gonna start by priming and then we'll charge, we'll seat, we'll fire them and we'll see what happens. So here we're essentially filling the loading block. It's handy that I happen to be loading exactly 50 rounds in this session. A little bit of a press, doesn't take much here on the coax. Very good feel overall for the, the priming system. And when I fill the block, I know I'm done. Show you up close here, we just drop our primer into the cup, put a case on, very gentle down pressure, 
good to go. So I'm about halfway through here and I've really kind of gotten into the groove. One little tip when you're priming on the coax is you definitely don't need the full leverage of the handle. So I like to just grab it down towards the bottom here and then the leverage is good and the feel is a little bit better. It's not like you've got you know too much mechanical advantage. So I'm going to prime a few more cases here and then we're on to charging. So here's the powder charging setup that we're going to be using. I'll walk you through kind of what I have laid out here. First I have my 10 shot load development powder charge data here. From 1 to 10, we started at max. I'm working my way back at 0.2 grains per increment. So we start at 39.1, 39.3, 39.5, and so on and so forth until we get to 40.9. And I've also labeled that here. I have my bench block that I've labeled, 1 through 10. So each five cases vertically here will have the same charge. What I'm going to do so I'm going to operate both at the same time, each on the same charge weight, 0.2 apart, and they will charge the cases progressively like so. So what we need to do is start with 39.1 on the left charge master light, and we're going to start with 39.3 on the right charge master light. These are going to beep when they're done. This is going to speed up the whole process considerably. And if we were using the same charge weight and loading in bulk, the process would be nearly identical. It's just the charge weights would agree there. Okay, so number two actually finished first. Number one is finished. It gives you the charge number. So I'm going to go ahead and charge here. We can start this one again now. Okay. If you hit go again on manual, it's just going to charge to the to the same weight. And we keep going left, left, right, right, until I'm completely done with this entire bench block. It's going to take a little while, but this is totally worthwhile as an exercise because it's going to tell us a lot of meaningful information about what's going on here. Now I saw here on the scale that this particular case read 39.3. I'm just going to check that because it should be 39.1. Nope, it's 39.1. That was just a fluctuation in the readout. Just double check and we got to be absolutely sure of all this. Okay, so I'm going to continue along with my process here and make my way through all the charges. And last one. Time to see bullets. Okay. So I'm going to grab my Forster micrometer seating die, pop it into the coax. Now, with the bullet seating process here, the only really critical thing is that we're handling one cartridge at a time and seating that particular bullet very smooth and putting it back into the loading block, the bench block, each time because we're arranged in a grid here with our charge weights and we can't afford to mess that up. So I'm going to go ahead and seat these 50 cartridges and then it's going to be time to shoot these over the chronograph to see where we're at and to see what kind of data we're going to be able to visualize from that. Looking forward to that. And now that I've finished seeding bullets, our cartridge preparations are complete. Painstaking, but very much worthwhile. 
Shooting 10 shot load development groups is really straightforward. You're just gonna load the magazine forwards or backwards, but in order, shoot the shots over a chronograph and take a look at the data in a program like Excel. I like to graph the data so that I can visualize it quickly. It's really easy to work with. If you have a chronograph like the Magneto Speed V3 that I use, it's really easy. It'll log all of the data in series to a micro SD card, throw it in an adapter, load it onto your computer and start to work with the data. Now for my expanded 10 shot load development, it's really 50 shot load development because I had 10 series of five shots each. I loaded the magazine with each charge weight, so five rounds per, per load, started a new series, shot the series over the chronograph and then reset the series to a new number for each successive five shots that represented a particular powder charge weight. Now, what I was hoping to see was sort of the trend line of the average speed in feet per second for each of the shots, and then also the standard deviation contract and expand as a, as a function of that. And I actually have the chart here on my phone really interesting results. Not exactly what I thought was gonna happen, but very, very close. So the first graph that I produced was the 10 shot load development group. And I thought, hey, there's a, a speed node there on 40.5 grains. Well, upon further examination, when we look at the 50 shot, 10 shot load development chart, we see an interesting pattern. So what happens is there's kind of an inflection point, a flattening off spot, and then the speed continues to pick up. Well, it looks like there's a lower SD if you look at the clusters and the labels with, with the standard deviation listed. Don't worry, I'm gonna have all of these charts in the complete write-up. Make sure you click on that link in the video description. That right-hand edge of each flat area was where we saw a really, really low SD, and it turned out with more data available, I was able to hone in and I had an SD of just 4.3 feet per second for five shots at 40.3 grains. Very close to that 40.5 grains that I initially thought my optimal SD would be at, but having five shots for each charge weight gave me a lot more data and it's a lot more to visualize. So if you're really working on an exacting scenario, I would say don't hesitate to do the 50 shot low development methodology, the expanded 10 shot development methodology. What I'm gonna do next is take a look at what kind of group sizes I get at that 40.3 grain H4350 charge weight with a Hornady ELDM 140 grain bullet. If I get a really good group, at 100 yards, I know two things at that point. I know that the pressure dynamics are optimal. I've got a low SD, a very consistent burn, very insensitive to minute changes in powder charge. Now, the grouping will tell me more about the rifle dynamics. What about resonance, vibration, harmonics, the complete system of the rifle? Basically, is the end of the barrel, the muzzle, waving around at all due to some of those dynamics. If I get a small group size, I'll know I'm in a stable region with respect to the rifle system in terms of dynamics. If I get a larger group, what I'll do is I'll go back to my chart here and I'll pick another low SD node, like 39 and a half grains, where we had an SD of 5.55 feet per second, very close to 4.3. By the way, 4.3 feet per second is outstanding. It says something about the Hodgkin powder. It says something about the Starline small rifle primer brass that I was using. Very consistent ignition, very consistent brass in terms of case capacity and volume. This is a killer setup. And I'm using standard federal small rifle primers. I'm not even using bench rest primers here. So where I'm headed with this is I could end up with the absolute most killer uh, long range and short range round possible. And that's the exciting part of being able to look at this data, being able to have a systematic approach to load development 
and finding that magical combination of components. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any of this action, we're going to be doing more experiments. Large primer versus small primer, 6.5 Creedmoor brass. What's the deal? Pros, cons of each. You're going to want to subscribe to my channel, Gavin Tube. And uh, I'm looking forward to continuing on with this exciting adventure of fine tuning and honing 6.5 Creedmoor to the full capability of this awesome cartridge. So until next time, Happy shooting and happy reloading.